All right, here we are with Andrew the Legend Ledger. Andrew, where did you get that nickname of the Legend? The Legend? I'd have to say uh, I didn't. I never got that nickname. That's just something Gabriel Ryder calls me. Uh, but uh, hey, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, I've seen your game and it's it's legendary. Yeah, you know? It's going to be something people talk about for years to come, I guarantee you. All right, Andrew, let's do a little uh, what's in the bag. Just kind of run through, you know, what clubs you play, Shavs, Loft Lies. Just kind of if you can give us a little in-depth look of uh, what you have in your bag. Okay, well, I got a, a variety of clubs here, 14 to be exact. Uh, I got my wedges here. I got the TVDs, the Titleists. Uh, they, I really just play them because they look good, to be honest, but uh, they got some good feel. Um, uh, all the bounce is, is set to my swing. Uh, I got the X100s in these shafts, which are, gives me more feel than the Project X in the rest of my irons. Got some fat grips on there, some nice jumbo lambkins. You know, I try to wedge it close, so you know, you gotta have the wedges to do it, right? And then my irons, uh, I got the Project X 7.0s. To my knowledge, that would be the, uh, the lowest flight you can get, heavy shafts kind of thing. And the Titleist MB4s, 712s. Once again, fat lambkin grips. I got not the biggest hands, but it just feels better in my hand than the regular uh, Golf Pride small grips. What size gloves do you wear? I wear men's large. So men's large, you have jumbo size grips, yeah. Jumbo grips, yeah. It, it's just it's just a preference. It just feels better. I don't know I don't know why, but you know it's just. How did you know those felt better? Did you kind of try out different size grips and figure out which ones felt the best to you? Yeah, I uh, I I felt it like. Holding the regular size grips, just, it didn't feel good, and so I'd start hitting balls with fatter and fatter grips. And to be honest, I could even go a little fatter than these. Wow. To be honest, yeah. So, but these these are the ones I'm stuck on right now. I wear like a size medium almost, and I've been thinking to go into like at least mid sized. Yeah, I feel like it takes kind of takes a little bit of the hands out of it, maybe. I don't well, know. There's less. Uh, yeah, and like even for me, like my hand will re will go around the club and still touch the other side. Mm -hmm. And like. You know, so I figured sure. I can't be too big. Maybe you got long fingers or something like that. Yeah, you got real long fingers, like ape fingers or something. Yeah, well, gri gri grip's the only part where uh, you make contact with the club, so it's really important that that feels really comfortable. Yeah, it's our, So, yeah, right. and I go straight from, I got three three to nine iron there, and I go straight to the two iron, which is the uh, the driving iron by Titleist. It's, uh, it's pure. Uh, I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it. I'm not much of a hybrid guy. I got pretty, uh, I'm a lot of spin. On my shots so a two iron is perfect to get the flight I want I can hit off the tee into par fives that sort of thing fat grip once again lambkin lambkin's doing it doing it big the lambkin and I go yeah. straight from the two iron to the driver it's kind of a gap that I'm kind of kind of working on right now but uh, I got the Titleist 913 7.5 degrees aloft with it's cut down half an inch to make it a little more control is that 44 and a half or 45 it's got to be 44 and a half. I'm yeah. not sure exactly. The fitters know that. We can give them a call. Yeah. Well, let's give them a call real quick. But uh, yeah, I threw a pin grip on it, and that's kind of a little bit different. Uh, I was going through grips, and with my driver, it just felt really good. Once again, there's no one way to do things, and I think that's the way I do it. So. I like Ledger, you know. Uh, all right, Ledger, let's uh let's see what you got inside the bag. Looks pretty packed actually. Inside the bag. Oh boy. Well, we got we got a variety of pockets here. This is where I keep my golf balls and my headphones. So that's when I'm practicing. I got. Got my music for that sort of stuff. What type of music you like listening to? Uh, when I'm practicing, I usually stick with country. You know, it kind of fits my rhythm, fits my swing. You know, it's relaxed. I can kind of sing along a little bit. I don't want any dubstep or dance music while I'm hitting balls. Or I'll start tugging it way left. <laughs> so I don't do that. In this pocket here, I keep my tees, uh, my cell phone at the moment. Got some tape for my fingers and pencils. And usually this isn't in there. That would be the. That would be what, the. What brand do you prefer? Golf ball. No, little wee hoo, little chew, little chew. Oh, th th well, th this here, this here, this is Smoky Mountain. This is this is tobacco free. Are you sponsored by them? So I, I should be really <laughs> because uh, you know I I try to I gotta always have something in my mouth whether it's gum that sounded wrong but uh, whether it's gum or seeds you can't spit seeds in the green so I got some tobacco free Smoky Mountain here nice. keep the cancer away and still get the same feel. So I like it. This is my dip pocket on the side here. Great. And uh, yeah, just in here, this would be just where I keep my gl my gloves and you know, hopefully not, but maybe a rain jacket if needed. And that's kind of what what I got going in my bag. Nice. And then obviously I got this because you know, God bless the North, right? So there you go. Can you give us the old uh, stereotypical A from from Canada? It's got to be in a sentence. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, like we're hitting some balls out here, eh? Like, you know, oh, you know, that's great. Like that. It's so natural. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, rolls off the. It's what it is. We got to be a little different than you guys. 
America. That's what we do. America. America. Exactly. America. You got it, Americans. All right, let's see what you can do with these clubs. Let's see you hit a couple. All right, well, hit a couple. Hit a couple eight irons, maybe for you. Yeah, work us way up the bag. We wanna. Oh, let's start with some wedgies then. Some wedgies. Ooh, wedgies are kind of like. We'll go. We'll go with it. You got your own style with the wedgies. I do. You? I do. I do. I like to keep them low. I like to see them. See them blow my brim of my cap. I don't ever like seeing my wedges go way up unless I really have to. So I, I, my 52, my gap wedge is probably my favorite. Um, no matter what the shot, I can hit it from anywhere from 100 to 135 if I need to step on it. So that's kind of kind of the wedge I like to use. Keep, right. on, keep it down, keep it keep it right in front of me. You know, it'll never get offline, right, right in front of me. So what do you like to do to keep it low that might be different than somebody else who likes to throw it up there a little higher ledger? Um, I'd say like I, I keep the same, you want to keep the same loft for all, for all your shots. Like I don't want to de-loft it to hit it low and I don't do that. I have the same loft, it's just I guess I, I keep my left hand a little more bowed at impact. Okay. Which kind of keeps the flight like this as opposed to that. And a lot of guys like to use the bounce for their wedge shots and kind of flip underneath it with their bottom hand. That's just not, it, it doesn't go well with my full swing because my full swing I really get out in front of it so just trap it kind of trap it in there yeah you like to kind of narrow your stance a little bit kind of set up a little open for sure and, and to be honest my st my stance is never the same like it's it i literally when i'm hitting the golf ball i'm looking at the target i'm looking where i want to hit it i'm looking at the flight i want to hit it and where my feet end up is just where i want to stand you know what i mean when you, when you when you're when you're standing in line at a grocery store you're not thinking about how you're standing. You're not. You're not setting up in a certain way. You're just standing what's comfortable. I do. Well, you do. Because well, I think I'm being like uh, like a good-looking woman. I want to make sure my posture is good. Okay. Or like, well, then I'm you're looking for the fitness chicks. You're looking for the <laughs> chicks that care about that stuff. So there you go. I just kind of stand whatever comfortable and just kind of hit it. And if you guys can think of the bigger picture, is your golf swing and game needs to match your personality. So as you can see, Ledger, he's got yellow pants. He's got the faux hawk. You know, shirts just, you know, he, he is a field player, but he's also a field person. And it wouldn't be right if his game was real rigid and structured, if that's not how his mind worked as well. Well so, said, Gabe. Well as said. you can see, his swing matches his game, and that's why, you know, he can get some good rounds going because he doesn't fight him, his natural self. Moving up to the 8-iron, here's a couple. Swing. It's pure. Now, uh, let me ask you if this is right, Ledger. I kind of have a theory on this on field players versus like me more mechanical players. Is I kind of used to think that maybe if you're more of a field player, you might be able to fix things kind of during the round because you're not like so st sticking to one way of doing it, one thing. Mm -hmm. Like if it's wrong, I'm gonna kind of fiddle around with it mm -hmm. and kind of you know fix things instead of staying one way. Sure, for sure. Uh, if I were to ever coach or teach somebody growing up, and I know most coaches teach you, the first thing they'll teach you is grip, alignment, that sort of stuff, make sure you're perfectly square. And that's great and everything, but if I were to teach, I would teach somebody, you know, teach them the face, teach them the path, make sure they understand what makes the ball curve, what makes it do different things, and have them hit those shots with different alignments, so that if they're ever their alignment gets a little bit off, they can fix it. Like, they, they have the ability to, uh-oh, my alignment's off, I gotta go see my coach, I can't play next week, like, I'm, I'm way off. As opposed to, like, I'd teach them to stand with a really open stance, stand with everything open and hit a draw even though you'd think that that would make a cut because that gives you a really good awareness of the face the path and what makes the ball do things and that way if you have that and then you learn good alignment your cake that makes a lot of sense i've never heard that and that way you can adapt quicker during the rounds for sure you, you have you almost have more versatility now because sure. you are able to hit from many different positions for sure and i think it really it really teaches you how to use how to use the club onto the back of the ball which is the biggest thing Well, you can actually, you know, that philosophy actually makes sense for the simple fact that there's a lot of guys on tour from the Freddy Couples and the Lee Trevinos and the Snap Steeds who set up close and set up open and had different backswings. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many different setups, so it doesn't mean you have to be one way all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to, because you're, like you're saying, your alignment, everything's not going to be perfect all the time. Your no. ball position might be a half a ball back or half a ball exactly. forward. You got to be able to work around those things. That's gonna, it's gonna happen, right? And it's, it's almost impossible to have the same alignment, same setup, same ball position every single time. If you want to be perfect, like obviously you can get it close. But if you, I mean, 
if you have the ability to to kind of feel it and know what's going on you know so one day your, your body's gonna feel different every day it's never gonna feel the same so you you know your body's gonna change and if you have the ability to, to adjust it and kind of feel what you're feeling that day and it, it works out all right let's see you at that two iron what would you tell somebody maybe who's aspiring to be a professional golfer uh, that they may not know um, maybe how much money you make or like you're saying the competition's really good mm -hmm. we're out here in arizona gateway tour is pretty decent i mean it's mm -hmm. not you know probably e-golf